And welcome back to the Kansas City Royals franchise mode here on MLB The Show 23. It is the off season, and yeah, I mean, you look at the screen right there. We lost the World Series in seven to the St. Louis Cardinals, but we are back now for the off season where we will try to regroup and get our team back for 2026 because let's be honest with ourselves the team that we had was not good enough to win the world series it just wasn't i mean we got kind of placed in a good spot because of how our pitching went um and how well our pitchers played in the playoffs but i mean you know dylan carlson michael garcia vinny pasquantino salvador perez jock peterson luis garcia anthony santander alec bohm mj melendez Jeter Downs, it wasn't enough. And we're going to go over each of these guys individually um, soon. But for now, we're going to just go look at some stuff. We're going to look at our pitching later. But the World Series MVP, Pete Alonso, well deserved, I would say. Two home runs, five RBI. I, I get why he won the MVP. Um, MVP in the American League this season, the regular season, was Mike Trout. National League, Ronald Acuna Jr. Cy Young was Corbin Burns for the American League. And the Cy Young for the National League was Spencer Strider. Batting title won by Ronald Acuna Jr. and Dylan Carlson. Uh, reliever of the year, A.J. Minter, Emmanuel Classe. Rookie of the year, don't really care. Hank Aaron, Mike Trout, Acuna. Golden Gloves, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's look at our team individually and the guys that we have on the squad. I'm gonna go position, position by position, really just look at what we've got. Shane Bieber, of course, Cy Young, had a decent regular season. But again, all these guys were good in the playoffs, except for Asa Lacey. You can see the postseason stats right there. 1.7 ERA for Shane Bieber in the playoffs. He was good. Brady Singer was good in the postseason as well, even though he did struggle two years ago. But last year, or this year, he was pretty solid. Um, and he was good in the playoffs. Herman Marquez was the best pitcher in the postseason by far. Wasn't even close. Actually, we can look at postseason MVP. I don't think any of our guys are going to win it. Um, oh, Vinny Pasquantino won it for the American League. Wow. Really? Vinny won it? Okay, I mean, I guess. 269 average. It's just because he played the most games. I'm surprised, though, it didn't go to uh, to our Bieber or Marquez. National League's Pierre Alonso, of course, with seven home runs, which is nuts. Um, but anyways... Sheen Baz didn't really pitch in the playoffs much, uh, given maybe is he better than Asa Lacey. Honestly, I, I don't know. He might be. There is Asa Lacey. We've got Ben, too, in the minor leagues. He's 22 years old. Do we look at starting him next season? I don't know, because really our five is pretty solid, so I don't know what we do with him. Um, on the relief pitching, Dylan Coleman was good. Uh, he was good in the regular season. Probably our best guy in the regular season. He was good um, in the postseason as well. Jordan Hicks was good in both. Uh, Andrew Chafin was solid josh stalmont uh eh. chapman was good surprisingly um because he's getting old and he's 69 overall uh scott barlow good decent blake trinan was really good do we keep trying at 37 and he's regressing i don't know or do we hand it over to barlow but barlow's got seed potential so do we keep barlow we gave him a deal in the offseason that was going to keep him around for a while we could move on for him I, i'm not sure um we go to our catcher of course salvador Perez at 237 in the regular season uh, it wasn't great, um, but I mean, you know, we got to keep him around. I think he had 42 home runs. At one point, he was looked at as at being a potential MVP candidate. Of course, he didn't get there, but yeah, Salvador Perez is going to be around next season, I would think. Uh, going on, oh, not the Twins. To our first baseman, of course, Vinny Pasquantino. Pasquantino is really progressing into a really good baseball player right now. 85 overall, uh, you know, 27 years old. You've had 280 in the regular season. He keeps on getting better. Vinny Pasquantino is a good baseball player. I'm really excited to see what we're going to get out of him um, on to the future. Luis Garcia. Uh, okay, he's only 24. That's what makes me keep him around. He's the potential. Was an all-star a couple seasons ago, 267 last year. Wasn't great in the playoffs, but he's probably going to be that guy. However, we have Kevin Valentine, who's 18, a potential 73 overall. Do we bring up Ben Valentine, or sorry, Kevin Valentine next season? Is he ready? I don't know. When you look at him stat for stat, though, with Luis Garcia, feeling-wise, he's not as good. But hitting-wise, he's almost about the same, and they're very similar. It's very interesting. Valentine's got good speed. I don't know. I'd like to see Kevin Valentine play one year in the minors because, again, he just got, we just drafted him. So I'd like to see one year out of Kevin Valentine in the minor leagues, and then we get to see him the year after. But he looks very, like, close to being MLB ready, only at 18 years old. Third base, I'm getting rid of Ogbom. I'm not playing another season with this guy because I couldn't hit with him. Like, I know he did okay in the 70, bad 300 last season or two years ago with the Phillies. He bad 255 for us. I don't care. Alec Bohm, up on Adi, up on Adi here. I'm, I'm done with this guy. I'm, I'm, I'm done with him. Um, Bobby Witt Jr. at 93 overall. Again, 250 average in the regular season. Wasn't great in the postseason um, until he got hurt, of course. He'll be back next season. He's dealing with a broken forearm. Michael Garcia, he's a backup. He's serviceable. 
Jeter Downs, same thing, backup serviceable. Left field, MJ Melendez. Oh man, I don't know what to do with this guy. He's a potential. I'm going to test the value of MJ Melendez. We're gonna look at look and see what we can get out of him. He's only 26 years old, still got a lot of service time, arbitration to deal with and whatnot. He's a potential AD overall. He's not really been performing in his first four seasons in the major leagues. If we can turn him into something really good, I will move on from him because we have a guy in Bostein who doesn't really play. He's an 80 overall. Yes, he's 5'9", but he's not bad. And of course, Jock Peterson as well. I don't know if we're gonna keep Jock, honestly. I just don't know. He's regressing. He's not very good right now, um, even though he's still got power. Dylan Carlson, um, a guy, again, very big surprise, 324. He's one of the guys who is safe on this team no matter what. I'm keeping Dylan Carlson around. He is going to be our leadoff hitter. And then what do we do with Gavin Cross? Because Gavin Cross is on the team as well. He doesn't really play because we have so much depth. I want to get Gavin Cross in the lineup, so we'll see what we do with him. But at some point, we can't get to the point where we're rebuilding too much because we're trying to, again, win right now. And if Gavin Cross isn't ready at 76 overall, we can get something else better for, say, trading MJ Melendez, then what do we do? And then in right field, Anthony Santander, he's staying on the team. He played really well. This guy's got pop. He's only 30 years old. Want to keep him around. Then Edward Oliveira is a guy who we failed to trade last season. Definitely enough to get rid of him that, Him now. He didn't do anything for us really this season because he didn't really play. Got to move on from Oliveira. Got to find some value elsewhere with him. He's only 29 years old. So we always take a look at the depth chart. This is what it is right now. I mean, you got Shane Bieber, of course, our pitcher, our best pitcher for the future. He's going to be a 99 overall. I mean, you look at this team in the future. It's a really solid squad. I mean, this is, again, just guys we have under contract for a while. You got Pasquantino. You got Freddie Ayala, who is coming up soon. We, we are very crowded in the outfield. I think Santander is going to start regressing, I guess, sooner rather than later. But for now, he's going to be good. Bo Steen's going to progress into a really good ball player. Same with Gavin Cross. That's why I think again, MJ Melendez maybe doesn't have a fit on this team. I know he's not just, he's just not under contract. That's why he's not showing up later in this uh, as we progress through. But yeah, I don't know. Um, Bobby Witt Jr., they only have an 86 overall. I'm assuming that's with the injury because he's already like a 90, 93 right now. So I don't know why he'd be regressing at all. Um, Oh, they have Milan as a catcher. Oh, that's where they have him. Yeah, I guess if we're going to keep him around, that's where you'd want him if Salvi isn't great. But for now, Prez is still an 83 overall. Do we really move on from Salvador Prez? Just a thing with, you know, him being a royal forever. Do you want to move on from Salvi? We've had this discussion twice already in the channel. It's been a no both times. I'm not going to ask it again because I'm cool with keeping Salvi on the team. Don't get me wrong. It's just that, again, what do we do with MJ Melendez? That's the problem. Um, again, the pitching rotation is good, so... I think we're pretty set for now. Let's move on now to the official offseason. Let's officially send to the offseason and move on. Our contracts come to an end. I mean, oh, actually, hey, guys. All right, hate to break it to you guys, but this is now the Philadelphia Phillies uh, franchise mode. So let's get it going, guys. Um, our squad, we've got Bryce Harper in right field. We've got Edwin Diaz. Oh, yeah, I need to take off this hat now. We've got Edwin Diaz as our closing pitcher. We've got Trey Turner. We've got JT Realmuto. Um, I'm really excited for this team, man. It's, it's a really good Phillies squad. I think we can make an impact, really, because this is actually about my personal GM and not the Royals. So it's a really solid squad. Br Bryson Scott's going to be the future. I'm really excited for what we can get this Philly squad. So it's going to go on, man. Going to try to bring a championship back to Philly because they've had all that, you know, they've been troubled in the past. I'm just kidding. We're not going to the Phillies. Um, hopefully I didn't get anybody with that. I don't know. I thought I turned off GM contracts, but apparently I didn't. It's fine. Um, we're still with the Royals. Thank God we didn't get fired because that would actually be really bad. Um, okay. Uh, retirements. You Darvish goes. He's on the Braves. Kershaw retires on the Brewers. He's on the Guardians last season. Yes, Money Grandal goes on the Giants. Uh, Kershaw Hall of Fame. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. So I kind of threw that thing across my room, but exclusive free agent negotiations. So Herman Marquez, we gotta keep, right? I mean, Marquez, 31 years old, but he's been good, man. And I really like pitching with Marquez in the game. So I'm willing to give him, yeah, honestly, a five-year deal. It keeps him around for basically the rest of his career. Um, I mean, or the rest of his prime, I would say. If we're able to get him for $8.3 million, I'm cool with that a lot with Herman Marquez. Blake Trine, what does he want money-wise? 3.1 a year, yeah, I'm not gonna decline that. I'm gonna keep him around for that money. Jock, all right. It's 3.3 a year, though. Do I keep Peterson around? Because I think we kind of have to move to the future here. If we can, like, we got to get Gavin Cross playing. We got to get Freddie Ayala playing eventually. I'm going to move on from Jock Peterson. It sucks, but that's what I'm going to do. Yarbrough doesn't really play. I'm going to move on. Aroldis Chapman, I do actually want to keep. 3.5 a year isn't great. But for what we get out of Aroldis, out of Aroldis Chapman, that's not, oh, actually, need a, yeah, that's not bad. It's really not horrible. It's really not. So we're going we're gonna to keep it. Oh, and folks, real quick, if you haven't yet, though, make sure that subscribe button down below for some more Royals franchise mode here on the channel. We're not going to rebrand. We're going to go to free agency one. 
Um, boom. Okay, hopefully our guys resigned with the squad. Uh, no, nobody's resigned yet. Not ideal. Okay, let's move on to free agency itself. So, uh, I'm not really scared of losing these guys in the 40, um, or sorry, not in the 40, in the five roll draft. We got to offer arbitration to all these guys. I'll do that off camera. You'll see that in a second. Um, actually, no, I'll, yeah, I'll offer arbitration because we're not going to lose any of these guys. I'm going to tender contracts and do arbitration off cam because you don't need to see that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, neither Marquez, Chapman, or Trident have accepted deals yet. We'll real quickly look at free agency, then I'll get into it myself later, and I'll show you guys who I'm going to offer. Vladdy Guerrero would be interesting. Uh, obviously, we're not going to do it because we have Pasquantino, but I can go by, by position. We don't need starting pitching. Um, at the bullpen, Jose Alvarado wouldn't be a horrible lefty to get at all. I'd actually really like that. Him and Chafin would be kind of gross. Uh, Ryan Helsley's getting a huge deal. And yes, Ryan Helsley was insane last season. I could not hit this guy to save my life. He's the best closer in baseball. World Series champion now, Ryan Helsley. I, I would think about offering him, but the Cardinals are giving this man $103 million. Hell no, can't do it. Uh, catchers were good. First base, no. Second base, is there anyone here who I'd really choose over Luis Garcia? No, not really. Brandon Rogers would be the only guy, but he's going to get a big deal by the, from the Rockies. Third base, um, that's where we need to look to improve because Alec Bohm, really nothing here really strikes me. So we're going to have to make a trade, I think, for a third baseman. Shortstops, Bobby Witt, were good unless we move someone to third, which none of these guys really fit that mold. Uh, even though Alberto Mondesi loved to have him back, but not going to bring in Alberto Mondesi. In the outfield, I think we're kind of set with our guys that we have coming up, but I can definitely look at a, you know, a guy to bring in maybe. Um, Brian Reynolds would be very interesting, but he's getting a huge contract. Cedric Mullins would be interesting, but it looks like the Phillies are going to get him back. Cody Bellinger, eh. In right field, I would love to get the lane train Lane Thomas. I might think about offering Thomas just because I really like his swing and he's a he's a you know big guy. Uh, he's been on the channel for a while. We like Lane Thomas around here, so I'll think about that in a second. But first, let me do arbitration, tender contracts, and we'll talk later. Okay, so I've done arbitration. I've done these contracts. I think I have a, a, sort of a game plan here. This is my this is my thinking right now. Um, okay, we're gonna start Gavin Cross this season. That's my that's what I'm thinking. We're gonna start Gavin Cross. We need him to start this season. He's 25 years old. You got to start him eventually. It's going to have to be right now. We got If we're going to give Gavin Cross a shot, it has to be right now. So we're going to start Gavin Cross. Um, okay, bohm has gone. We're going to look for a trade later for Alec Bohm. I don't want to keep him around. I don't think he's very good. Going to get rid of him. I don't like his swing. MJ Melendez, I think I'm going to keep because I, I'm planning for when Salvi retires or when Salvi's not good enough anymore, Melendez goes behind the dish. For now, we got to keep Melendez around, but... I don't think he's gonna be an every, everyday guy because it's a guy in free agency that I'm gonna show you that I want. And I think we're gonna have Melendez go every other day. Melendez will hit righties, even though he's not entirely great against righties. I'm gonna still have him hit only righties, I think. <sighs> he needs his contact to be better against righties, but that's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna have Melendez hit righties. He's gonna play against right-handed pitching, but then against lefties, we'll move our DH and Anthony Santander back to the outfield. And hopefully if we can land this guy, come on. And Garrett Cooper, Garrett Cooper can just hit left-handed pitching because he's really good against lefties. So I'm going to offer Garrett Cooper a deal. He's 35 years old, but he's a veteran type guy we can bring in. Going to give him a two-year deal. Hopefully we can take him away from Tampa Bay. That's who I want. I know he, you know, he bet 298 last season. Good year for him. Power number was power numbers weren't really there, but against for against for a guy who's only going to hit left-handed pitching, I like that. Okay, that's when we make a move there. I'm thinking about trying to sign Ty France to bring him in and play third base. That's the other thing I'm considering here. I think our number one target first though, should be Jose Alvarado. This makes all the sense in the world. 81 overall relief pitcher. I'm gonna throw the bag at this guy. And that makes sense to go out, go out and get Jose Alvarado. That makes a lot of sense for us. Okay, now the only other thing is do I go after Ty France or not? I'm not gonna give Vladdy to make him play third base. It's not really what Guerrero does. So I think Ty France is a decent choice to bring in and play third base. His fielding isn't great, though. That's what kind of concerns me. So if we're going to really put all that much money into him, are we really relying on a guy who's not great defensively at third base? Because that was the whole reason we moved on from Max Muncy. I don't know. I don't know. He wants 12, year, 12 mil a year. He's a guy who's been a multi-time all-star. It's honestly, I mean, he's been hitting really well for average for a while. I mean, really since he's come to the MLB. I think this is the move here. I'm going to bring in Ty France, $60 million, five five years I really like that deal and we can still trade Bohm and we can still look elsewhere but I think Ty France is going to be a really good choice here I like this a lot I'm going to try to get Ty France I'm going to try to move him back to third base I know that he might go down overall wise but I don't think that is a horrible move at all um so we're going to sim a little bit see if we get anybody Will Smith goes to the Mariners we do not care 
Uh, I'll send until here. Brandon Lau gets traded for. Wow, the Angels got Anthony Rendon's contract off. Holy crap, he's gonna go to Houston. Um, okay, so we will look at our free agents. We have not signed anybody yet. Oh, we got Trinan back. Chapman, we're good with. Cooper, good. Alvarado still ahead. Marquez ahead. France ahead. We gotta wait and to see what we get with these contracts first. Brian Hells, wow. Oh man, the Dodgers get Helsley off the Cardinals. That's huge because Helsley's good. They get outbid him. Wow, by seven million dollars. Hundred twelve for Ryan Helsley going to Los Angeles, and the Cardinals respond. They go get, go out and get Devin Williams. Thing is, Devin Williams not as good as Helsley is. Um, and okay, we got Ty France. That's huge for us. That's absolutely huge. That's huge. Eighty six overall. He had three thirty last season. Twenty three home runs. Eighty eight RBI. Huge for us. Dylan Cease going to the Braves. We don't care. But wow, man, welcome into the team, Ty France. We're gonna make France now a third baseman hopefully it doesn't change the overall too bad that would really suck if it did uh, i can play second we're not gonna play him there and at third he's an 83. it's kind of what we have to do though i know we're paying a lot of money for a guy who's gonna be 83 overall but we don't really care about his fielding all that much we are just here for him to swing the bat and if he can swing the bat effectively it's all we, that's all we really care about so ty france now enters the lineup um, i'm gonna go over this again with the lefties and righties but for now ty france can come in and this is a guy, I mean, we are now very, I would say loaded at the top of our order. Um, I mean, I see we do what the kind of the Royals are doing in real life right now. And that's bat Bobby with fourth. Um, and we would just, we'll just be loaded. I think we go, uh, yeah, we go Carlson, Carlson, France, uh, as my camera dies, we go Carlson, uh, France, Pasquintino, Wit. Perez, Santander, Garcia, Melendez, Cross, and then if we get Garrett Cooper, then Melendez and Cooper just kind of go in and out. That seems like a really good lineup, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think the Ty France addition is huge because again, we're just replacing Alec Bowman with Ty France, and that's a huge upgrade for us. So we're gonna see if we can get our other guys that we offered. Uh, we, oh, we need Herman Marquez back. That's huge to get him back. Okay, yes, all right, good, thank God. We get Herman Marquez, huge part of this team. We get Jose Alvarado, just waiting for Garrett Cooper and Aroldis Chapman, two guys who I think we're gonna be able to get. Um, Cause you look at where we are, you know, in terms of just position wise and where we are compared to the rest of the league, pretty damn good. Um, some a little bit more. Zach Gallon of the Cardinals, the Cardinals are loading back up the reigning world champs. Kyle Tucker goes to South Beach to play for the Marlins. Uh, okay, the 40 has to be set now. I don't really care about that because we're good. Okay, so we got who's the other? Oh, we oh, so we got Cooper. All right, big. We get Gary Cooper. That's fine. He can play the outfield if he needs to. We're not gonna play him out there at 33 speed. But uh, yeah, Gary Cooper can go in now. He's not gonna bat against righties, but he'll, he'll hit against lefties. And I need to change this lineup, of course, against left-handed pitching. But for now, again, uh, he can slide into the DH role, and then Anthony Santander can just go back to the outfield. And you know, of course, Garrett, I just need to change this all. What's gonna be the lineup, of course. But Gavin Cross can go play the outfield against lefties because I kind of want Gavin Cross every single day. And if Cross isn't performing, then we only have him hit righties. Then we have Melendez slide in that spot where he is lefties as well. We're again, we have a lot of flexibility with our lineup. If we need to, MJ Melendez can go play catcher if we need to again garrett cooper can go play first base we have garrett cooper if we need in the outfield we have a lot of guys who can just you know switch in and out we don't really have too much flexibility with the middle of our infield i'll be honest with you um actually no ty france now gives us some flexibility as well because alec bone wasn't able to play other places we have a lot of flexibility now with our lineup which is really great it's the only thing is at short it's pretty much just bobby witt jr but we don't really need anyone else to play short and if we have to i guess michael garcia can go in there or even jeter downs um so we're good there now we just look to make some trades against the guys who we just quite honestly don't need and maybe hell if we can package some guys we get even better than what we are right now so i still need to look at edward olivera's trade we can't do it just yet obviously and the same with alec bowman if we can package those two guys with someone really good oh man i mean hell i don't dislike uh shane baz but if we can package those two guys and shane baz for seriously an ace in our lineup and a second ace in our lineup my goodness that's the trade i'm kind of looking at right now Oliveras, uh bohm and baz for a star pitcher we will see we'll have to wait on that in a second i have to get through arbitration and everything um i'm good i've already offered everyone i want um of course everyone's been offered arbitration yeah i think my work here is kind of done jt romuto gets a one-year deal a huge deal by the toronto blue jays um cal quantrill goes to the blue jays as well so the jays are loading up uh okay i think we're good still yeah we're good um 
I like where this team's going. Nico Honer uh, stays in the division. He'll go to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tyler O'Neill gets traded for South Freelick. Wow. Okay, the Blue Jays making more moves, but they're going to trade off Tyler O'Neill now. O'Neill going to uh, Milwaukee to play for the Brewers. Jose Urquidy goes to the Cubs. Uh, Reese Hoskins going to get traded to the Angels from the Phillies. The Phillies making moves over there. Rule five draft, we don't really need it. I mean, I could check who's potentially on the board. We're not gonna pick anyone, I don't think. Uh, oh, it's not the Bryce Miller, okay. Um, oh, it's Bobby Miller, it's the guy in the Dodgers, I'm tripping. Uh, yeah, that's nobody I want. Okay, make sure, oh, I saw Foskey, but okay. I would, no, 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 I'll draft. I need to advance and skip selection. Cause once I did that, it was in, I think it was the Nationals series where I auto drafted and they picked someone for me. What I just wanted is just skip the draft over with. I didn't want to pick anybody. Okay, roll five drafts over. Cool, the A's, of course, going to be using that every single year. Dustin May goes to the Houston Astros. One of our rivals, I guess, the American League. will probably see May at some point. Uh, AJ Minter going from Chicago. Chicago to Chicago. He goes from the Cubs to the White Sox. Uh, into January, Michael Kopech, the hard-throwing righty, goes to the Houston Astros. Vladdy, wow! Only 11 mil a year. Oh, wow, we could have jumped in there then. Oh, we could have at least just jumped in there and moved him. Wow. Vladdy only gets 66 mil. What happened? I know he only batted 219, but why would he just take a one-year deal then? Vladdy's been locked up to go to the Guardians. He is now in our division, which is huge. Wow, okay. That's that's big. That was actually a big-time move right there. Vladdy Guerrero goes to the Guardians. Oh, man. Our arbitration. So, panel sided with MJ Melendez. Panel sided with Michael Garcia. We usually go cheap on this. Oh, we won on Eddie Rivera's. We won on Chris Bubich. We lost on Luis Garcia. We lost on Josh Stalmont. We lost to Bobby Witt Jr. We lost with Alec Bohm. We lost to Dylan Carlson. That's it. Okay. Well, we won a couple. Um. Mm, okay, free agency. We don't really need any of these guys, right? There's no one. Yeah, there's nobody good out here. Oh, Marcelo Zuna. Uh, Solaire, if you want some power, but we don't really need that. Okay. Cool, cool. Time to make some trades. So the deal again that I'm looking at, the package I'm looking at is Shane Baz, Alec Bohm, and Edward Oliveras. Let's see what we can get. I'm just curious. Okay, Ryan Mountcastle, move over here because my screen's over here, my computer's over here. I just want to see the trades. Uh, okay, Ryan Mountcastle, Jonathan Perez, no. Willie Adamas, Justin Casas, no. Oswaldo Cabrera, no. Kevin Gosman, 35 years old, no. Luis Robert, wow, uh, still no. Class, ooh, ooh, Emmanuel Classe. We could get our closer. Oh, and Giolito. Okay, we'd move Giolito. I'd hate trading within the division, but that's not a horrible move because I don't really care about trading within the division because you can have Alec Bohm. Shane Bass would be, yeah, it's tough giving him up. But if we can get Classe and Giolito, I know Trenton's been really good, but you lock down the closer for the future in Classe. And then you get Giolito, we move Giolito, and then we just start Ben Kaderma. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm going to keep an eye on that deal. That deal's not bad at all, actually. Riley, Riley Green, I'm good, though. Uh, no, from Minnesota. No. Pablo Lopez, no. Corey Seager, we don't need a shortstop, but no. Kyle, ooh, we get Austin Riley. Uh, we can get Kyle Wright or we get Mike Soroka. Not against doing that, really. Edward Cabrera, we had last year, so I'm not going to get him again. Francisco Alvarez, no. Ooh, Zach Wheeler. Wheeler's 35 now. I, I love that deal. I'm not going to do it, but as a Nationals fan, that's... Wait, they have Mason win now? Okay. I mean, that's... Love that deal. <laughs> James Wood, Josiah Gray, Mason win. I'm not going to do it because we're not trying to, trying to rebuild, but if you were trying to rebuild, that'd be the trade to do. Uh, Pete Carr Armstrong, no. Hun Ooh, Hunter Green. Wow. Or Freddy Peralta. Actually, straight up... Pete Alonzo and Eric Lauer. Oh, my God. Okay. O'Neal Cruz. Straight up. Jackson Merrill. Oh my God. Uh, we're getting some really good deals. Okay, straight up, the deal might be Hunter Green. These three guys for Hunter Green, I think, is a better deal than uh, who's being offered. It was, I forget. I forget. Oh, Freddie Peralta. Peralta's in the last year of his deal. He's going to hit free agency next year. That's no, that's a bad deal. Hunter Green still got a lot of time, right? Oh, okay. He's only got one year left, but still. How's he been doing? Oh, Hunter Green's not been pitching well, though. Because honestly, on paper, Shane Baz has been kind of the same. But again, we're getting rid of Bowman Oliveras no matter what. So if we just trade for Hunter Green, I mean, right, he's 26 years old. He's 87 overall. We probably couldn't get anything else. But do we really need anything else here? Okay, 
we're gonna keep an eye on that i'm gonna look at mlb ready trades i don't think it's gonna change it too much but we might see something different here so gosman no casey might be interesting but again hunter green's better than casey Mize. the only downside of taking that deal is that you don't get anything else but do we really need anything else exactly they're old yeah i, I honestly think hunter green's the play because we can still negotiate contract we have them for two years again the, my thing with this we're gonna get rid of bowman Oliveras in the first place so we're just trading a guy in shane baz who essentially it's two guys we're gonna get rid of and then shane baz is just being replaced by hunter green who hunter green is better than shane baz given he's only got three pitches which, which i know is eh, but still i think this is the deal we're gonna trade with the cincinnati reds we're gonna bring in hunter green the 6-5 righty hunter green welcome to the kansas city royals big move in the offseason but there you go i can finally come back here hunter green has now been entered and why is jose alvarado here okay but our rotation now man my goodness i mean bieber singer green marquez lacy and we have we still have some guys coming up man because we're gonna have a dilemma eventually with ben ben kaderna um who is 23 years old who's still in the minor leagues We've got Frank as well, he's 22 years old. We have a lot of good pitching, and we just we just entered another really good pitcher into the fold. I mean, Hunter Green again is a serious pitcher who's gonna make serious waves for our squad, and I love that deal, because that is huge. And so our lineup, I need to change it again for everything, but this is gonna be kind of what the lineup's gonna be. I know my face cam is in the way, so I'll move it for now. But um, you have Dylan Carlson, you have Ty France, you have Vinny Pasquantino, Bobby Wood Jr., Salvador Perez, Anthony Santander, Luis Garcia, MJ Melendez, Gavin Cross. It's kind of going to be what the lineup's going to be. Garrett Cooper will play against left-handed pitching. It's a, it's a, it's a good lineup. It's a really good. Oh, and I switched the wrong thing. It's good. It's a good lineup. It's a really good lineup that I'm really excited for. Um, and I think that's kind of all we got to do here. I'll just sim. I'm um, just in case anything happens. But I think we're kind of good. Yeah, spring training. This is your Royals team for 2023, man. It is a good Royals squad. I'm very excited for it. This now feels like a team that we can seriously win a World Series with because it's so improved. We've gotten a real good pitcher in Hunter Green who could be an ace on most squads, but he's our third pitcher. We are a real solid team with real solid guys. The Kansas City Royals folks are here to stay. I would negotiate a deal with Bobby Wood Jr. to bring him back long term, but I'm going to wait because my goodness, he hasn't been very good. But this is a Royals team that is willing to win now and is capable, very capable of competing and making that step to the next level. I think this is going to be our year, folks. We're going to take it all. So, folks, thank you all for watching the offseason here with the Kansas City Royals franchise mode. Here on MLB The Show 23. Make sure that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure you like if you did enjoy the video. We'll be back tomorrow for opening day 2026. And also, we're going to have some Diamond Dynasty on the channel as well. Finally getting to DD uh, on Memorial Day. But yes, got to have Diamond Dynasty coming out tomorrow. And same with the Royals. Royals 2026 opening day. So, folks, thank you for watching. Make sure that subscribe button down below for more and Mamba forever.